Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the subscribe button for us? It really does help us out. Do you have a modern console that seems like it hangs on a start screen or is constantly trying to rebuild its database? Well, all of our new consoles have a hard drive in them and with moving parts, we can have failures. In today's video, we have a PS4 on the bench that had had a hard drive that had failed. So we're gonna look at the steps required to change out that hard drive and how to reinstall the firmware or the OS again. Unfortunately, when you have a complete hard drive failure, there's not a whole lot of chance of regaining your save data or your games. So it is important to have some cloud save or some backups in case of failure such as this. But if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. On the bench today, we have a PlayStation 4 and it, what appears to be a bad hard drive. This isn't a super common problem with the PlayStation 4, but hard drives are mechanical, mechanical, electrical, and they can fail. Um, I see this, you know, maybe once a month, twice a month. Um, and I get questions all the time, even from um, this particular customer. You know, he asked, how did it happen and what can he do to avoid it? Um, obviously, if your PlayStation 4 is sitting on a shelf and it's not being bumped or moved around or anything, then you've already done the best thing is to leave it alone. Um, when the discs are spinning, there's gyroscopic force. And if you're trying to move it around while it's operating, you know, you could crash ahead. It's not common. Modern hard drives are pretty tough, but that's, that's about it. Um, hooking them to a uh, surge protector can help too, but I don't think most of the hard drive failures I see have to do with bad power. I think it's just simply a something failed kind of scenario. So on a PlayStation 4, well, the other question I get asked, am I going to lose everything? And the short answer is yes, kind of. Um, if you don't do any backups and you don't have uh, a Sony account, um, you know, a PlayStation Plus account, then yeah, nothing has been backed up. So your saves are gone. Um, and unfortunately, you know, that does happen. If you do have a PlayStation Plus account, well, then all your saves should be backed up to the cloud, not to mention any purchased games you have or, or whatnot. So while it is a nuisance, it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, the new hard drive can be put in, the software can be reinstalled, and then you log into your system and it downloads. Matter of fact, um, on my PlayStation 5 unboxing, um, matter of fact, I'll link it up here and I'll put this little clip in. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see some of the stuff I've been playing, you know, things that are coming up. It's finding my, my gallery. Um, and you can see my icon is from Loco Roco um, PSP game. It's kind of fun. And you can see that my brand new PS5 started populating with my games as soon as I logged into my account. Um, it does take time for them to download, but, but they're still all there. So anyway, how do you know it's happening, I guess is the next point. Um, if you start having any kind of errors, um, you know, whenever you're booting or playing, you get an error saved it and right, or a game doesn't want to boot, you know, you might be getting close to that time. So you may want to make sure you have an account active and it's been connecting to the internet, um, or go ahead and just swap that drive out now. Um, while that is a bit extreme, you know, you could catch a, an issue before it happens. Um, not to mention, you can always just upgrade too. You know, the original PlayStation 4s had a 500 gig hard drive, but nowadays, a uh, two terabyte drive isn't horribly expensive, well under a hundred dollars for just the parts. Um, and I believe one of the newer updates has let us get up to 16 terabytes. Um, so you could have more than enough room for anything you want. So in this case, this particular uh, PS4, 
it started um, going into the the rebuild um, well like a system update or rebuild um, screen on its own and it was hanging at 24% and uh, when the owner told me about that I knew that the drive was basically failing it was hitting bad sectors and it couldn't do anything so as you can see we're in safe mode and um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and power this down and I'm gonna show you what it takes to to swap it and the biggest part of it is getting the new software installed so let's get it shut down and get started we're gonna ho hold the power button until it shuts down completely There we go. Sometimes it takes a while. I'm gonna take our cables out. Pull this straight out so you don't damage your HDMI port. Um, as you've seen several of those on my channel already. All right, so the nice thing, you know, Microsoft, and I'm, and I'm not bashing on Microsoft because I do own a lot of Microsoft products. Um, Sony allows us to play with the hard drive. Um, which has always been nice. On, on this particular uh, PS4, this is a slim. Um, we've got a cover right here and it just pushes off sideways like that. And you've got one Phillips screw and it's kind of a small one. It's, it's a number one that comes out. Put that aside. And then you got a pull handle. And that's it. Our hard drive's out. Um, on the fat PS4s, the top cover slides, as you might have seen in uh, my last video with, um, or one of my last videos, with uh, a PS4 cleaning. So here's our old hard drive, and it's in a chassis with a couple screws, um, and it floats on rubber. So let's go ahead and get these screws out. There it is. Now we've got a new uh, two terabyte Barracuda drive here. And, oh, these are the two and a half inch um, laptop drives. And pretty much any of them will work. Um, if you get one with, you know, real high end specs and, you know, high speed disc and uh, good cache um, size, you can actually improve the performance of your PlayStation um, but you're going to find those are a tad expensive. So usually just going to a larger drive will enhance the performance. Um, for a while, these exact Toshiba drives were available and they were fairly inexpensive. Um, you know, I think I bought a few for the PS3s. Um, so they were only the 500 gig and, um, you know, they were the whole way down to about 35 $37. Um, the one terabytes, well, I haven't been able to find the, the exact Toshiba replacement, but <clears throat> you know, if you hit Amazon or your favorite computer store, you'll, you'll see what current prices are. <laughs> when I was telling one of my kids, one of the first computers I built, um, I put a, f uh, no, sorry. I put a hundred and uh, 28 megabyte hard drive in it. Uh, this was a 386 um, in the very late 80s. And I paid almost $400 for that hard drive. And you know, now it's just amazing what these have done. I generally will save these and give them back to the customer if they want them, but um, data recovery services are quite expensive. So anyway, our hard drive's back in our tray. We'll set that aside for a second. Get our PlayStation. And goes in the same way it came out. Make sure it's seated the whole way in. Put a screw in place. 
Now, uh, one word of advice. Uh, this one isn't too bad. If you've got an older PS4, um, there could be quite a bit of dust down inside. Um, and, you know, simply pulling the drive out and putting it back in, you could get a load of dust down in the plug and, it, you know, it may not read. So don't panic. Um, pull it back out. Make sure you're grounded and, um, you know, vacuum it out. But, uh, you know, this tray was very clean when it came out. Okay, so as far as the cover is concerned, it's going to go most of the way on. And it's going to just drop down in flat again. And it snaps in place. So that's it. I mean, it's, it's really that, that easy. Um, so, okay, so the next step of this is to get our software. Because right now, obviously, that's a blank hard drive. Um, so if we move over here to the laptop, you'll see, um, and I'll, I'll link this down below, but, uh, all you need to do is Google or use your favorite search engine for PlayStation 4 USB update, because we're going to need to put this on a, on a memory stick and just plug it into the front of this. <clears throat> so there's going to be a few different options, but just come to the regular PlayStation support and click on the update. And, um, you know, you're going to see a few things. And we're going to go here to install PlayStation 4 console, update from a USB drive. And then we're going to download that system software update. Now, I've already done it, but you're going to save it somewhere to your computer. It's going to probably automatically go to your downloads folders. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to... Um, move it around. Now, the next part of this is your USB drive. Um, I had several of these uh, laying around, these uh, retractable ones, but they're too fat to physically fit into some of these PlayStation 4s. So keep that in mind. Um, so what I've been using is just a, a micro SD card reader because it's nice and slim. So what you're going to do, you're going to put that in your computer after you get it, uh, you know, wherever you've got it at. So, you know, in my case, it would have come to my downloads folder and I'm going to move it to the stick. Now you can see I've got PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, because this is my PlayStation memory card. I've got one for Xboxes also. And you're going to make a folder in this case called PlayStation 4, all capitals. Inside that folder, you're going to put a folder named update, all capitals. And then you're going to put the update that downloads. Okay. And once you get that all in, you can remove your memory card. Okay. This can go in either of your USB drives. And you'll need a controller with a known good cable. Um, these things are a little temperamental and, um, you know, you definitely need a cable that, you know, has no issues. Um, it's a micro USB to a standard. Um, but anyway, here again, if for some reason you're plugging your controller in, and it's not seeing it, just go find another cable. I have three or four around the shop that charge things just perfectly, but for some reason they don't like to talk to my PlayStations. So I keep this one handy on the PlayStation 4 controller. Okay, so where are we at? Let's get our cables back in. And some power. Now what we're gonna do, there is a chance that this would put itself into safe mode because there's nothing on that hard drive. But what you're gonna do, is you're going to hold the power button and it doesn't matter which version of the PlayStation 4. You're going to hold the power, you're going to push it to start it, but keep holding it. And it's about six to eight seconds. You're going to hear a second beep. When you hear that second beep, release it. And that's going to put us into safe mode. And the first thing it's going to do is ask you for a controller on a USB cord. There we go. And push the PlayStation button. Now, 
you can do any of these. Well, let me take one step back. When you have that other hard drive, you can try to do this, uh, put the update on the memory stick and go ahead and update it. Cause this will try to do an update, rewrite the software without taking everything back off the hard drive. I find though, once you get to this point, it doesn't do anything. You can try to rebuild the database, but it could take hours. And here again, it doesn't do a whole lot. Most of the time, the quickest route, go ahead and pop that hard drive out and, and uh, reload. So now we're gonna come down to number seven and reinstall the software. Put it on the USB stick, which we already did, and it's in our uh, PlayStation. And we can just hit okay. This is gonna take a little while. So, I'll be back when it gets to the next step. All right, so we got to our next step. This took about oh, five or seven minutes or so. It's gonna say all user data will be deleted. You have no choice here. Um, the hard drive's been replaced. Everything was on this one. So, you know, don't, don't think there's another option here. You, you've just gotta say okay and move forward. And then it starts loading the software. All right, so the software is installed and it just did a, a self reboot. It should come back to basically the original setup screen. Oh, still doing a bit of an update. Um, up to this point so far, it's taken about oh, eight or nine minutes and it has reset itself twice. <clears throat> There we go. And this is the same screen you would have gotten when it was brand new. So here again, make sure you have your controller on a USB cord. And you're gonna have to do an initial setup. And that's that. Um, the owner will have to set up his own uh, account, pretty much just log in and it'll start populating and uh, he'll get all of his saves back. Um, I had already verified that with him. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, it's not a complicated procedure. It takes about 20 minutes um, start to finish. It could be a little, as I've said before, fiddly, uh, especially with uh, the memory card, because while it does say in the instructions on the Sony website to put them in the folders, I know even a while back, I skipped the folders and I spent you know a half hour trying to figure out why it wasn't installing. But remember, PS4, update, and then put the actual file in that. Um, and as you can see on mine that uh, you can have PS3, PS4, uh, probably PS5, not that I've had to really work on one of those yet, but um, you know, that's, that's about it. So anyway, if the video was helpful, if it was entertaining, 
you know, please give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button for us because it helps. And um, I'll see you on the next video. I appreciate you being here. Thanks.